with the brain. Uh, does, I don't speak Portuguese that well, uh, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, are we doing a translation as well? Oh, we, oh, cool. We're doing sign language of neuroscience. I can learn a few things. That you, okay, cool. So the neuroscientists that you may know and love uh, look a little something like this. They work in large research universities, um, and they work with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to really understand how the brain works. Uh, and this is a bit of a shame because uh, one out of five of us, as 20% of the entire world, has a neurological disorder. And how many cures do we have for neurological diseases? Zero. So no cures, yet the only way to study the brain is to get a PhD uh, and go to graduate school. And that doesn't seem very fair, does it? So uh, we're going to change that, and we're going to look at how other areas of science have done that. You know, in astronomy, you don't need to get a PhD in astrophysics to understand a little bit about how the, how the heavens work and maybe become interested in, in becoming a scientist or maybe an astronomer. Uh, but that's not the way you do things in biology. It's, it's quite hard. Uh, so what we did is we came up with a way uh, to take about a forty to a hundred thousand dollars of research equipment and make it affordable enough, like the like the cost of a low price telescope that allows you to see not the planets but inside your brain to really understand how the brain works. And so we're going to do that today. And I'm going to need some volunteers from everyone out here in the audience to help me. Uh, and we're going to do this by studying this guy right here. And this is the brain. Uh, the brain is this large organ on top of our head. Uh, and if you were to peer in with a, uh, a microscope, uh, you would see that they're made up of small cells. And these cells have names. Does anyone know the name of these cells? Neurons. In Portuguese, neurona, I'm guessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Close? All right. Uh, and so the a neuron's a normal cell. Uh, it just has a very special things about it. It has a, what we call a process, a long extension that reaches out and touches another cell. Uh, and it's through this long process, which we have a name for, it's called an axon, uh, that all of the information in the world that you experience gets passed, right? So it is passed in a, a very distinct form of, of energy called electricity. And so everything that you, you think, you hope, you desire, you dream, uh, remembering your first kiss, all of that is being encoded by spikes uh, inside the brain. And so these are uh, these packets, I just refer to it as spike. And the reason why I refer to that is that is that it actually looks like a little spike. And this is the unit of information that information comes in. And so this seems all very abstract. I'm using all this this terminology, I'm showing you pictures, uh, but you know, this is campus party, we wanna get a little real. Uh, so we're gonna be able to record these spikes uh, in real time, and we're gonna be able to understand how, that, how these neurons and how the brain work by interacting with it, and we're gonna be able to hear it and see it and live it and be able to do some very interesting things. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna tell you that this entire week, you're gonna see a lot of cool things at campus party, but I guarantee, with only a slight amount of hubris, that what you're going to see in the next 45 minutes will be the coolest thing you're going to see all week. All right, that's a big, that's big, big news to say. But uh, stick around and tell me if you agree. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to need a, a volunteer to recreate what was first done in 1928. Uh, I need one. I saw you. You had your hand up right there with the glasses. Come on down. So you are uh, going to be our first volunteer. What's your name? Yeah, 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 come on up. I'll give, I'll give you a hand up. What's your name? Luis. Luis. All right, so Luis, uh, I could record from your brain. Uh, I would take a drill and I would put a drill, okay, a burr hole right into your head. I could put some wires in there and I could record that. But we're gonna do something slightly different. So I'm gonna have, you hold this, and I want you to take a look inside of there. Let's open it up. And what you're going to see is our, is our stand-in for Luis. 
It's a giant cockroach is exactly what it is. Yeah, you can take it out, get used to it, uh, and don't let it fall. And we're gonna use the, the cockroach because the cockroach has the exact same nervous system as you do. It has a brain just like you do. And about a, a hundred billion years ago, the nervous system evolved to have a brain and a spinal cord. And this, if you look up here on the graphic, you see the same thing in the cockroach as you do in the human. Uh, and if you actually slice the tissue of the, of the cockroach and I sliced your brain and I put them under a microscope, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because the size of the neurons are the same. The way they fire electricity is the same. It's just that we have about 80 billion neurons and these guys have about 1 million. So much, much less number, but the cells are exactly the same. So we're gonna do a, a cool experiment right now. And we're gonna record the brain of this cockroach and it's going to be the same as the recording from your brain. It's going to stand in for right now, okay? Uh, but we need some help, and that's where you're going to um, do. So I, I want to do one uh, announcement for those who may not, who, who does not like cockroaches in the audience? A fair number of you. Well, this is a, a, a PSA on behalf of the poor cockroach. There are many insects out there. You know, there are butterflies, dragonflies, lightning bugs things that we love, you know, ladybugs. Uh, but the cockroach is nothing different, all right? It's just a slightly different on the, on the tree of life. Uh, and what we're, we're gonna do is we're trying to rescue the poor cockroach and bring them back up to the elevation status of the other insects that we do love. So we're gonna do that today by recording his brain. And so, uh, Luis, you are gonna be our, what's called an anesthesiologist. Do you know what the anesthesiologist does? Yep. Yeah, okay, so uh, you're gonna knock this guy out and so if you come over here, I have some ice water here. And your job is to, you're going to take the cockroach out, and I want you to dunk him into this ice water. Let's see if I can get this onto the camera. Uh, can you push this one? Is it touchscreen? No. OK. So here's the ice water. So what you're going to do is you're going to place the cockroach in here. And let's do alt tab. There it is. Okay, that's not the cockroach. That's <laughs> that's paper. Okay. All right. So just drop the cockroach in there. So what we're going to do? You don't want to touch it. You, well, who kind of anesthesia? Okay. So now what you're going to notice, as the anesthesiologist, so the, what the anesthesiologist does, they knock people out. When you go in to get, like, surgery, you don't want to wake up. It's one of the biggest fears people have uh, is waking up and someone's digging into you. So we want to make sure that the, that the animal will stay asleep so we can do a surgery on him and record his brain. And so what we're doing is we're uh, putting him into ice water because what's, the, what's one of the main differences between insects and humans? Warmth, warm-blooded, right? So we're warm-blooded, they're cold-blooded. So by placing them, oh wait, we lost our image here. Uh, oh well, oh, I guess maybe it's on the other screen. Hey, where's the IT guy? Oh, you're the other IT guy. Where's the other? <laughs> How do I drag this out so that people can see the coolness that we're gonna see? Uh, just one minute, okay. but. There's some science we need to talk about. So uh, when, we, when we're cold-blooded, uh, what happens is that uh, when we're warm-blooded, we, we can regulate our body temperature. But if they're cold-blooded, they can't. So what happens is that there's these little pores that open and close that allow the electricity to flow through. And when it gets cold enough, they can't move open and close. And when they can't open and close, they can't fire spikes. When they can't fire spikes, they can't feel pain. And when they can't feel pain, they, uh, they also can't move. And so we can check right away if they're anesthetized by taking them and picking them back up again. So take him back out again. So we can't do it. Okay. Someone's coming to help us. All right. Well, we don't need that for now. You can just pick him up and take a look at it. And so this is the cockroach that was running away just a second ago, and now he's completely comatose. He's chilled out. He's not dead. He's still alive, but he's just in a state where he can't feel pain and he can't move. And we're going to be able to now to do a surgery. So I'm going to have you place him back in there for right now. And I'm going to need one more volunteer to come up to be the neurosurgeon. So a bigger round of applause for Luis our being our anesthesiologist. Have a seat. 
All right. This guy jumping up like crazy. All right, come on down. You, you, it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like a game show. I love it. <laughs> we need to get the people dressed up with the, with the hats next. All right, we have our neurosurgeon coming down. This is your first neurosurgery. Okay. What's your name? Ether? Edder. Like Eddie Vetter. Edder. I got you. Okay. <laughs> I like it. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have you do a neurosurgery, but we're not going to put the electrodes into his brain because remember that the nervous system flows all the way out throughout the body. So the first thing we want to do is record from its legs. Uh, and I want to show you what we're going to do. And we actually can't see the video right now. So I'll show you here. Um, if you cut the leg off of a cockroach, that seems pretty cruel, doesn't it? Uh, it's going to cause pain and stuff to the, the insect. But remember, cockroaches are much more advanced than we are. Uh, and they actually are, are further along evolution. And so when they lose a limb, and what we're doing is an experiment here, we cut the leg off on the right side and we're leaving the left side uh, unmolested. And you notice after 43 days, a new leg appears. And if, okay, now they fixed it, perfect, all right. <laughs> so that's the, the story is that these uh, insects, when they re remove a leg or they move an antenna, they, can, they have the ability to regrow them. So it might seem like it's pretty uh, harmful, but it's actually not harmful. So Edder, what I need you to do is take this anesthetized cockroach. I'm going to place it here on the table. And I'm going to have you cut the leg right here off the edge of the cockroach. So you can kind of get close to the body. I'll tell you where. A little bit closer to the body. A little bit closer to the body. Yeah, right. Yeah, a little bit. Split the difference. A little bit, actually right here you hold your scissors open and i'll kind of place it in there yeah oh perfect okay so now we have i'm going to put i'm going to do lewis's job for him i'm putting him back in the onto the ice water so what we have right here is a cockroach leg and if you can see here it's got hairs running all up and down that leg i'm going to use this big screen here so inside of all of these hairs there's a neuron in there and that neuron's job is to alert the cockroach if something's, uh, if you're walking into the room or if you open up the door and that wind blows across the room. These cockroaches can detect that and they want to get out of there. And so they're actually quite fast. And that's why, that's why people get freaked out by them because they actually have the fastest speed per body length uh, of any animal in the world. So it's kind, of, it's kind of a creepy thing. So you just remove the leg so that we can do some uh, recordings from that. So what I'm going to have you do now is we're gonna record from the electricity of these legs by placing them into some pins here. And so remember, this is the electrical current that's gonna come from the leg, and I can do it up here. This is gonna be electrical current that's gonna come from the leg up to the, to the brain through this space right here. But even though the cockroach is sitting here in the ice, the leg doesn't know that. The leg is still alive, it's gonna still send information. So what we're gonna do now I'm going to have you place the cockroach on here and just stick two pins through the leg. All right, one pin there and just two pins anywhere. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap in. Go ahead and stick the, the, yeah, pick it up and stick it right through there. We're going to tap into the electrical communication from a neuron as it's sending information to the brain. We're going to be able to listen to that and hear that and manipulate that to really understand how the brain works. And we're going to do that with this kind of very low power tool, which we call the spiker box. You did it, man. You did it right. You did it right the first time. Yeah. So you stick it right through there. And we're going to be able to hear what the brain sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And we're going to listen, possibly for the first time, what the brain sounds like. All right. Are you ready? Are you guys picking that up? Can you guys hear that? I'm going to put it in my, my microphone. So it sounds like popcorn popping, I hear, or like bacon frying. But this is actually the sound of spikes. And so what we can do is we can do an experiment now. Because remember, spikes are information. So if we send information into the leg by touching it, 
we should be able to hear an increase in the amount of spikes. So go ahead, Editor, I want you to touch the hairs. The hairs. Oh yeah, let's do this one. Okay, then don't touch it. Yeah, so every time you're touching that hair, I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna be able to see, because we are scientists here. We wanna be able to you know, see it as well. So I'm gonna plug this in. And so now we're looking directly at the electrical activity inside the brain of this cockroach as it's sending information about touch up to the brain, which is kind of cool. All right, so I need a round of applause for my uh, volunteers. Thank you, Edder. Thank you, neurosurgeon. Thank you, thank you anesthesiologist, wherever you, you may be. Uh, and so I'm going to show you really quickly what, the, what one act potential looks like. And so you may have seen these in books. So this is the a beautiful, beautiful act potential. This is sodium, potassium, and this is what the, what the soul of what you are is. It's, this is exactly how you record memories and, and play back things. It's all in that green line. It's in that movie, The Matrix. When you saw that code, you realize, oh my God, that's reality. Well, this is reality because this is actually what makes us who we are. All right, let me see if I can switch this back. Okay, we're back here. So this is the, I'm gonna turn down my, my spikes. Okay. So this is the experiment uh, that we just did. And now I've lost this completely. Okay. So we're gonna, we just recorded from the, for the, did I just bump it out or something? Okay. So we just recorded from the, uh, the cockroach's brain by sending information from its legs up to the brain. But remember, the brain also sends information back down to the cockroach leg so that it can tell the cockroach legs to move. So we can do a pretty interesting experiment, not by using the, um, some fancy lab equipment, just but by using a simple cell phone and instead of uh, plugging in earphones, you can cut the pieces off from the end of the earphone. And instead of sending the current to a little small magnet that allows it to vibrate inside your ear pods, we're gonna send that current into the cockroach leg and we're gonna see what happens when the current from the cell phone excites the neurons inside the cockroach leg. So who has a, who has a cell phone that has some some good music on there that we're going to be able to do this experiment with. Any, anyone? To, all right, come on down. Harvard girl. <laughs> all right. Do you have anything? Do you like, um, do you have Brazilian hip hop? What do you have? You find it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, now that we have this all set back up, I'm going to ruin it all again. Uh, by switching back over, I want to be able to see this. Oh, this is brilliant. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to place the electrodes onto this cockroach leg here. Like so and like so. And so now it's going to take the current that's going to normally go into your headphones and send it directly into the cockroach leg. I'm going to plug, have this plug this into the bottom of your, oh, you don't, you have a fancy phone. Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's all right, I'm prepared for you. Yeah, okay, so when you're ready, go ahead and hit play. And it's turned up all the way. It's not working. Oh wait, there it goes. But it's not, uh, pick another song, this one sucks, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the cockroach doesn't like it. All right. Let's see if you can see it from the side. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, meh. It's all right. But you guys kind of see that cockroach leg move in there? All right. Not very impressive, though. Okay. That's what's so cool about it. Maybe, maybe try turning it down. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's like in, in tetanus. Okay. But turn down the volume. It could be like... Uh, so stimulating. Oh, yes, do it again. You just hit play. All right. 
Okay, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's all right. It's not your fault. We could try. Well, I'll tell you what. I have a, I have a video. We'll do the video. And then uh, we're going to be doing a – this is a little plug for the workshops we're going to be doing this week. Uh, so over here in the workshop cyborg area uh, for every day, we're going to be doing uh, cockroach um, cyborg workshops. And we're going to be doing some human cyborg workshops. Uh, and so we'll be able to do this a little bit more uh, intimately with, with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. But I did want to show you, because it, it is too cool for school, uh, what it looks like. And I'm going to show it to you. Oh, 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 skip all these ones. So this is the setup here. Um, but instead, what we can do, uh, we did an experiment with the, uh, the long fin inshore squid. And this is a, uh, a, so squids are cephalopods, and they send information from their brain directly to change the color of their skin. A lot of things change the color of their skins, chameleons, but they do it slowly with chemicals. But the, the squid and cephalopods can do it very quickly, and they can communicate that way. And so what we're going to see now is they're going to take the output from a phone, and stick it into the fin nerve that's going to control the skid skin. Uh, at the same time, you're going to be able to listen to the music. So hopefully, uh, this that you can hear the music when I, when I play this. We'll find out. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> can we get some audio on this? There it is. Yeah, so this is insane in the chromatophore. So this is what's happening is when the current for the base frequency hits the end of that nerve, you're going to be able to see the chromatophore open up because there's muscles inside of there that open up every time that the chromatophore fires. So this is not correlation. This is causality. It's still beautiful to look at. So these are, uh, again, called chromatophores, and there's muscles in there that are being innervated by nerves. Every time the base frequency fires, it causes a spike, which causes those muscles to open, and that's why it's synchronizing to the, to the music. So anyway, that's kind of cool. So next thing I wanted to talk about was our good friend, the cyborg cockroach. We call it the Roboroach. It is the world's first commercially available cyborg in the history of mankind, and you're going to see it here. At, the, uh, at this uh, workshop that we're putting on this week. But let me just explain. We now have a little bit of a basics uh, of how this works. And it, it works by the same way that the cockroach leg was sending information to the brain. Now, if you remember, there are neurons inside the leg uh, that were sending information back. But there's also a neuron inside the antennas, right? And they're going to send information in. So that's key piece of information number one. There is neurons sending information to the brain. Information number two is the behavior. If you let a cockroach walk down the street and you touch one of its antennas, the cockroach is going to turn and walk in the other way, right? So that's just, it's called wall following. It's just something the cockroaches do. So if you put these two things together, you could turn it into something interesting. So what would happen if we placed a wire inside the antenna and we cause the current, just like we saw with that squid, to make that neuron fire? We can get the cockroach to think it's touching something, and then it's going to turn. So because of what we call the roboroach, and so we put a, a little head stage on the cockroach, and you guys will learn to do that. We have Bill Reith here, the, de the developer of this technique, uh, will be running this workshop with us. Um, and so when you do that, you've got like a little 0.1-inch header on the back, and then you can pair it with a little backpack. And then, of course, you pair your backpack to your phone, and then you could take your cockroach out for a walk. And so I'm going to show you a video now of this is what you're going to be able to do from this workshop that's running every day this week. So we're making a, just a Bluetooth connection between the phone and the backpack. And so this cockroach is still alive. As you can see him moving here. And so every time we virtually brush his antennas, we're sending a command to the brain via the backpack and converting it into a thumping that the cockroach thinks it's being touched. And then you can take your cockroach out for a walk. And now you can drive your cockroach left and right for as long as you want. That's pretty amazing. <coughs> so this is it. This is the world's first commercially available cyborg in the history of mankind. And we're doing a workshop here. This is pretty cool. So this is the, the roboroach. 
And it's also, thank you. And it's also a, a good model for learning and memory. The cockroach is tricked, right? We're tricking him into thinking he's being touched, but he also still has some free will. And he adopts to it. He, he realizes that there's nothing there pretty quickly, about 10, 15 minutes, and he stops returning. And so it's a good tool for learning and memory. If you take the backpack off, you put him back in, then you can measure to see if he responds again and how long does it take. All these, these are all very interesting questions in neuroscience that you guys can do this week, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So now we're going to uh, switch gears slightly, and we're going to move back to human electrophysiology. And I want some more volunteers to come down. Let's get, there's absolutely no females raising their hands. I see none. All right, I see one here. The 1952 t-shirt. All right, come on down. Sweatshirt, 1252. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now I, I did say earlier that it's impossible to record from the brain without drilling into the head. But we're going to do what's called a biohack right now. And we're going to be able to record from your brain without drilling into your head. What's your name? Julia? Okay, so Julia, we're going to do uh, something that's be kind of cool. So I'm going to take some electrodes here that have some, a little bit of salt water in it. And if I ask you to roll up your sleeves, we're going to place an electrode right here and right here, and then another ground electrode here. And so inside of her motor cortex, it's a small strip of brain right here. She has a, a number of cells, the largest cells in the cortex actually live in layer five, they're called BET cells, and they project all the way down to her spinal cord, all the way out to her arm, one neuron, second neuron, out to the muscle. So what we can do is we can pick up that electrical activity as it hits the muscle, like so, and we're gonna be able to capture that and hear what your brain sounds like. Are you guys ready? When you want to, go ahead and squeeze your hand really hard like this. That's cool. So these are the neurons in your spinal cord as you're, as you're flexing that. So hold this in your other hand. And you know, again, we are careful scientists. So we want to be able to see this. Yikes. This is called the electromyogram. And it's the way, let's see. There we go. Let me plug this one into here. Okay. Go ahead and squeeze again. Can everyone see this? This is cool. So this is this is called the electromyogram, the EMG, and it's, and it's every time her brain sends that signal to her arm. Go ahead and squeeze it again. We're starting to see that electrical activity on here. But this is like a very simple brain computer interface, right? Her brain is doing something. We're tapping into it and we're seeing it on an iPad. So you know, we want to see what we can do with that. So I'm going to unplug you for a second. We're going to, go to phase two, all right? And so this is campus party, so you got to be very familiar with this. This is an Arduino. And what do you do? What's the, what's the hello world of Arduino? You make lights turn on, right? So we're going to first start off with that. So we have a row of LEDs here. So when you want to, go ahead and start squeezing your hand. So you're starting to see the row of LEDs are going to start lighting up when you, like that. Okay. So that's because of the electromyogram that's in your body. Okay. So hold this. We're going to step, you know, we're going to get a little bit more complicated about it. So I'm going to have you hold this in your other hand. This is a robotic claw. And so what we can do, because now we can capture it from a computer, we can start doing some pretty interesting things, right? So uh, this is kind of a more real world thing. So as you squeeze your hand now, there you go. So this is a brain machine interface done very DIY. So we're doing a workshop on human interfacing. And we're going to be able to show you how to write the code to be able to take the brain signals from the spinal cord through the EMG and make it do real world things, OK? All right, but you guys want to see one. I told you at the beginning of this talk that what you're going to see is going to be the coolest thing you're seeing. And so far, it's eh, it's kind of cool, but you know we need to go one step higher. So I need one more volunteer from the audience to come forward. Let's see. Who do you, do you want to pick? Someone? With that guy going crazy? Yeah, come on down, guy with two arms going crazy. <laughs> 
All right, so I'm going to unplug this for now. And you can catch something. Yeah, we can, we'll, we'll, we'll do that at the workshop. We can set up some balls and we can, yeah, we'll make it. Yeah, this is why, this is why you come here, right? To cross pollinate and get new ideas. Okay. What is your name? Hano. Okay. And Julia. Okay. So, Hano, when you move your hand, you just move your hand like this, you can imagine that inside of his brain, there's also cells in the neocortex that are firing, synapsing on her spinal cord and coming out to his arm at the same way. So, if you guys are both moving your hands, your, both of your brains are lighting up and sending the same commands down there. But what would happen, because we already saw that we could capture the electromyogram in the computer, what would happen if we played it back and put it into your arm so that your, instead of your brain sending the command to your arm, her brain is going to send the command not only to her arm, but we're going to copy it and place it into your arm. And then her arm will be, or your brain will control both your arm and your arm at the same time. You guys believe that? Think it would work? Okay. So here you hold this for one second. And we're going to hook you up with another hack. Yeah, this, that's your brain. So as you're holding that, you can actually see that feedback. It's called biofeedback. All right. So you're going to give me a high five like this. I'm going to find the ulnar nerve, which is a little nerve that runs right through here. It's like if you ever hit your funny bone. Uh, it's because that nerve comes really close to the, to the edge of the body. And it's great for us because we can put an electrode right on there and we can tap right into it. And we're going to be able to send the electricity that's coming out from her brain to her body out to your, where your brain would normally command your hands to move. We're going to stick this in here and then we're going to send it over to you. Okay. So now we need to hook you two together. I'm going to place an electrodes here and here. All right, and then I'm going to plug you in together. And when I do, you guys will cease to become two people, and you will become one cyborg. All right, so I'll place it here. So, okay, so you can relax. So what you want to do, I want you to, to practice, like, going like this and getting those, like, okay. So you look away. And I'm going to slowly start turning on. You're going to start feeling something. So just relax your hand. Just leave it there. Now go ahead and do it again. You feel anything yet? <laughs> so, the, so <laughs> are you doing that? Okay. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more. Okay. Now do it again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn up just a little bit more. Is that okay? Okay. And it's a little bit more. All right, so now we have it. So whenever you want to, <laughs> you have lost a free will. All right, so no, you, okay. <laughs> All right, no, 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 just slow down, slow down. Relax, okay. So what would happen now if, if, I, if you just let your arm fall dead, let it, let it fall to the ground like it's dead, dead weight? I don't feel it. Let it uh, there you go, perfect. What would happen now if I move Julia's arm would it, move your, would it move your arm? We have a couple of no's. Okay. It's all right. But it does it. Just make sure it still works. You do it. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. And one last question is, is um, does her arm need to move? So what happens if I prevented her arm from moving? If I stopped her arm and, and she, would his arm move? Let's find out. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. This is called isometric contraction, same length. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> All right, I only went up to the I only went up to two, and it goes up to eight. So um, I'll just just a little bit more. One last one. I'll put up. Okay. You want to reverse it? You want? Okay. <laughs> We can. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to end with by letting you know that we're going to be putting on a workshop with this as well. Uh, I think it's in the mornings. Or it's in the afternoon. It's on the schedule. Uh, right over here at the, at the Cyborg Workshop Station. We're going to be able to do human-to-human -human interfaces. And this was developed uh, by one of our engineers here in Brazil named Max. So this is uh, uh, HO in Brazil. I'm not sure if that's how, that's how you say it in Spanish. I'm, what do you say? In, how do you say made in Brazil? Made in Brazil. Base in Brazil. 
Beto in Brazil. Okay, so this is, uh, we brought our engineer here, so he'll be working with you in that workshop. We have uh, Bill Reith here, who is the, one of the developers of the RoboRoach, and you guys will have been a really good sport. I'm gonna unhook you now, so you don't get zapped. I'm gonna end the talk. Thank you here. You guys can go back. Thank you so much. Cheers, man. And so I hope you guys appreciate a little bit more about how the brain works. And, I, and more importantly, that these tools that we've done are very low cost tools that replace many, many, many thousands of dollars. And our goal is to inspire you uh, to start not just you know hacking these things and start understanding how they work, but start to hack the brain and really understand how the brain works because we need more neuroscientists out there to actually studying these diseases. So thank you guys so much for your time and I'm so happy to be here in Brazil. Look at me up all week. Thank you. Bye-bye.